Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives, uh, still on uh, engineering science N3, uh, on our revisions on it. Uh, in this platform, we've got a question that we are going to focus on from April 2020, uh, where we are given on question number five, uh, 5.1, we are given to name three factors which, uh, on which the increase in length depend if a metal rod is heated uniformly along its length. All right, so take note, we need the factors that uh, will affect the increase in length. So actually, for you to know these uh, factors, you must take them from the formula for increase in length or the change in length, which is uh, actually equivalent to the constant that you're going to use, which is the linear coefficient of what of expansion uh, for that material times the change uh, the original length multiply by the change in temperature. So you can uh, start even with the change in temperature or the original length. So these are the factors which affect the increase in length or the change in length. So let's start with uh, here, the linear coefficient of expansion. This actually describes uh, the type of material that you are using. If it is for uh, aluminum, if it is for copper, so that means here we are going to have type of material. So we have got the type of material in this case from our linear coefficient of expansion. Then definitely here, that's our original length. So the length is taken as the original, the original length. So this is the original length of the rod or the material that you are using in this case. Okay, so that is the, of, uh, the rod. All right, so that's what we have. Then the change in temperature. So this is our temperature change. So we need uh, temperature change, uh, which can be actually referred to as a temperature increase or the increase in temperature or temperature rise or a decrease, depending with what is happening. But here we are talking about the increase in length. So which means this temperature change is actually representing our temperature rise. That is a rise in temperature. Okay, so these are the three factors. Uh, as I said, you can actually determine these factors from what? From the formula for the change in length. 5.2, we are given that there is an aluminum strip with a length of 200 centimeters and a width of 10 centimeters. Okay, so this is heated from 17 degrees Celsius to 107 uh, degrees Celsius. Okay, so we are given the original length uh, of the aluminum strip, which is 200 centimeters. So if we divide by uh, 100 so that we can convert to centimeters. So it actually depends with what you're given. So we can convert this to meters, which is going to be two meters, okay? We divide by 100. And also we're given the original width of the aluminum strip, which is 10 centimeters. So if we divide by 100, that will be 0 0.1 meters. So actually before, uh, let's just write the units that we had 10 centimeters, which is same as 0 0.1 meters. Then the, the temperature changed from, so this is our initial temperature from, that is our T1 in this case, which is a 17 degrees Celsius and uh, increased to 107, which is our temperature two. So that is what we have in this case. So we are given now to calculate each of the following 5.21, the change in temperature of the aluminum strip. So guys, this is direct, okay? So remember that the change in temperature is equivalent to T2 minus T1. Remember our temperature changed from T1 to T2. So the change, you are going to subtract T2 minus T1. So that is what you're going to have, meaning to say we are going to have 107 degrees Celsius minus 17 degrees Celsius, which is equivalent to 90 degrees Celsius. So this is going to give us 90 uh, degrees Celsius. Okay, 5.22, we are now given to calculate the change in length, take note, in millimeters of the aluminum strip. So we are given in millimeters, all right? Uh, the change in length, so which means we are working with the original length that we had, which is 200 centimeters. So you're going to convert to millimeters since it is needed in millimeters, okay? So let's start here by our formula. Remember, we wrote our formula before here that the change in length is equivalent to the linear coefficient of expansion times the original length times the change in temperature. So that means uh, from the information, 
that we are given here, we are going to have our, our original length in this case in millimeters since we need the change in length in millimeters. So from our original length, which is given as 200 centimeters, we are going to convert this to millimeters. Remember, one centimeter is equivalent to 10 millimeters. So you multiply by uh, 10. So if you multiply by 10, this is going to be 2000 millimeters. So that means here we shall have our, our linear coefficient of expansion. We need this one for, pop, uh, for aluminum. So let's take from our information here. Uh, if you are to check in on your list of formulas, uh, we are going to check here the linear coefficient of expansion of aluminum, which is 23 times 10 to the exponent of negative 6 per degree Celsius. So this is the one that we are going to use for aluminum. All right, so let's get back with this value. Uh, we are going to substitute here. So if for 23 times 10 to the exponent of negative 6 times the original length in millimeters, which is 2,000 millimeters. So if you wanted to use uh, meters or centimeters, you can use those units, but make sure that on your final answer, you have to convert to millimeters, or you can just simply convert at once, like what we've done in this case, okay? Times the change in length. Remember, on 5.21, we calculated the change in length and we got 90 degrees Celsius. So we're going to multiply by 90, or you can just multiply to 107, minus 70 in brackets, it is one and the same thing. Okay, so if you multiply properly here, we are going to obtain uh, something like 4,14, rounded off to uh, three decimal places, that was going to be a zero there. So this is in millimeters. So that was the change in length for the given uh, material, uh, which is the aluminum strip. Okay, so that's how they can ask these typical questions. Then on 5.23, the change in area, okay, of the aluminum strip in square millimeter. So we need the change in area. Okay, so first, let's see our formula. Then we are going to talk about the issue of units. All right, so this is 5.23. So remember that the change in area this time uh, is equivalent to two times alpha. So instead, oh, we are going to have the area expansion. That was the linear coefficient. Now we are going to have the area expansion, which is required, which is given as two alpha. So that will be two alpha, which is two times this. I remember that beta is equivalent to two alpha. So that is two alpha times the original area this time, not the length, but you're referring to the original area, but still multiplied to the change in temperature. So what you're going to do in this case, remember our area is required in square meters. So that means we are, we are supposed to obtain the area in meters, remember this is, uh, we are given in terms of length and width. So that means we are given it as a rectangular strip. So the original uh, length in this case, in meters, we got here two meters. So we're going to use two meters for the original length. So let's say for two meters, the width in this case, which is in meters again, that's 0 0,1. So that's a rectangular strip. If you're given length and width, these are dimensions of a rectangle. So that means we are going to calculate the area of a rectangle in this case, of which you know that area is equivalent to length times width or length times breadth. So that means we can substitute our values into uh, our formula to calculate the change in area. So that means the change in area is equivalent to two times the linear coefficient of expansion, which is the one that we got previously here, uh, 23 times 10 to the exponent of negative six times the original area, which is taken from the original length times the original width from our rectangle. So that is our length in this case is two times the width, which is 0 0,1. So this is our area times the change in temperature, still our change in temperature does not change. We are still having the 90 degrees Celsius. Okay, so this is going to give us our change in area in square meters since we used the length and the width in meters. So we're going to have our answer in square meters. So if you multiply properly, you're going to obtain something like 0, 0,000828. Which is in square meters. Okay, so that is what we could have done in this case to calculate the change 
in area. So sometimes they might even ask you to calculate the final uh, area. If it is for the final area in this case, uh, that is of this nature. Okay, let me F this way. Okay, let me change to pen. All right, so it will be the final area is equivalent to the original area plus the change in area. So it can be of that nature. Even for the final length, you might be given for the final length, still you use the original length plus the change in, in length. So sometimes they might ask the, uh, something of that nature, but in this case, it was ju just direct. Calculate the change in area, calculate the change in length. All right, so let's check another part of the question still on uh, heat, which is question five. We are now given another part here to make it a total of 15 marks. All right, so here we are given to describe the effect of the change in pressure on the saturated, on a saturation uh, temperature of a substance. Okay, what happens uh, if we are dealing with the temperature? Okay, the change, what is going to happen there in the change in pressure on the saturation temperature? All right. So as uh, actually what happens is that these two, they oppose. So as uh, temperature increases, actually, so as temperature increases, uh, we are going to see that the pressure, it will be decreasing. So as temperature increases, uh, pressure decreases. So that is a vice versa that you're going to, to have in, in a case where temperature now decreases. So if, a temp if the temperature now uh, decreases, that means at that moment, our pressure increases. So it's actually uh, a vice versa of what is happening in this case. So just uh, one case, you can use the second one, or, but it is just an inverse to the other or just a reverse to the other. Okay, on question 5.4, we are given in this case to calculate the change in enthalpy in megajoules required to produce 2 kg. Take note, we are required to produce 2 kg of wet steam with a dryness fraction of 0 0.9 at a pressure of. So once we are given the dryness fraction, that means the enthalpy that we are supposed to calculate is the enthalpy of wet steam, which is H wet. So uh, we understand that H wet is equivalent to HF plus XHFG. All right. So HF and X, uh, HFG, we are actually given these ones from our steam table. So it, unfortunately, I do not have the soft code right now for the for the steam table. But what you do is that you go direct to your steam table under the pressure. Remember, pressure under the on your steam tables is given in kilopascals. So under a pressure of one thousand uh, four hundred and fifty, you are going to check for these two values, which is HF and H. Fg. Okay, so you're going to cross check. There is HFG there. You take the value. There is HFG. There is a value that which corresponds direct to 1550. So I want you to take your steam table, go direct to 1550. You check for these possible values. Okay, so now we are going to substitute. If you are to cross check there, your HF uh, is going to be 838, which is in kilojoules per kg. Then your HFG uh, in this case is going to be 1,951, uh, which is in kilojoules per kg. So I wanted to check there properly. Okay, so uh, in this case, this is per kg. So we are going to multiply the answer by two kgs because in this case, the, 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 the values are given per kg. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is that our H weight in this case is going to be HF, which is 838 plus X, which is the dryness fraction. Uh, in this case, we are given 0 0.9. So that's 0 0.9 times HFG, which corresponds direct at 1,450 kilopascals. That's uh, 1951. Okay, so if you multiply here and add, uh, we are going to obtain two five as something like two five nine three comma nine, which is in kilojoules per kg. Okay, so this is per a kg. We are going to have our enthalpy of two thousand five hundred ninety three comma nine. 
But we are given this is going to produce 2 kg of weight steam. So we're going to multiply now by the number of kgs, which is 2 kg. So the per kg and the two and the kg here will cancel. That means our answer is going to be in kilojoules now. Okay. So if you multiply, uh, in this case, you are going to obtain 5187. 8. So this is going to be comma 8, all right? Something like this, comma 8, uh, which is in kilojoules. Remember that we had per, per means divided by. So we have got divided by kg times a kg like this. So the kg and kg definitely will cancel. You remain with the kilojoule that we had on top. So we are going to have kilojoule, the per kg, the kg cancels, okay? But take note, your answer is needed here in mega joules. Remember, mega joules means times 10 to the exponent of 6. Mega joules, that's times 10 to the exponent of 6. So here, kilo, we have got times 10 to the exponent of 3. So what you're going to need to do is we are going to need to multiply again by 10 to the exponent of 3 so that we can obtain 10 to the exponent of 6. So this we are going to move our comma 1, 2, 3. So that will be at 5 comma. So at 5 comma 1, 8, 7, 8 times 10 to the exponent of 3 times the kilo, which is 10 to the exponent of 3 now is going to be mega because if you multiply here, you add the exponent 3 plus 3, that's a 6. So you're going to obtain 5 comma 1, 8, 7, 8 megajoules or 5,188. Eight. If you round off this 8, it's going to change the 7 into 8. So it will be 5,188 uh, megajoules like that. Okay, so that is how you can actually uh, convert to megajoules or you can simply use your calculator direct, okay? Uh, from the answer that you have uh, on your calculator, you can directly uh, convert this by uh, two comma, okay, it was at this stage at five, it was a uh, five one eight seven comma eight. So you write this as kilo, which is times 10 to the exponent of three. So for you to convert to mega joules, remember mega joules is times 10 to the exponent of six. So on this value that you are having, you multiply by the inverse of 10 to the exponent of six, which is 10 to the exponent of nine, minus six. So if you multiply by 10 to the exponent of minus 6, your answer is going to be 5, 187, 8, uh, 1, 8, and 8 like that. That is the one that you're going to obtain from your calculator. So this answer that you're obtaining, since you multiplied by 10 to the exponent of, which means you are converting to megajoules, your answer is going to be in megajoules. Remember, megajoules is 10 to the exponent of 6. But to convert to your, from your calculator, you multiply by the inverse, but knowing that your answer is in megajoules. Okay, so that is how you could uh, have done it from your calculator direct, or you can simply uh, apply this case that uh, we had to multiply 10 to the exponent of 3 and the 10 to the exponent of 3. Okay, so that's what we had, guys, from this question uh, on HIT from April 2020, Maison African Motives, till we meet again.